In the last video, you learned how to create a header inside your website with a navigation and some social media links and a logo. And in this video, we're gonna learn how to include custom fonts to the website. Since we in some cases might want to add a custom font since using the default ones that we have available to us is not really seen as, you know, like the prettiest fonts that you can use inside a website. And it definitely doesn't make your website looking unique. So adding a custom font can be a really good idea when you want to make a custom website. So when it comes to adding a font, there's two ways we can do it. Either we can use what is called a CDN, which is when you link to a font online using a link, or you can add a custom font by downloading the font including it inside your root folder and then linking to it inside your root folder. Now there is of course pros and cons to using these two methods. One being that if you use a CDN, then it's going to load in the font faster than if you were to download a font and link to that one. But if you were to download a font, then if you wanna work offline and without any internet, then you can still see the font inside your website since a CDN requires a internet connection. And there is of course also the off chance that the CDN link that you might be using can break because something happens to the website that you link to. Um, but if you use a proper link using a CDN, then it is recommended that you do it that way instead of having to download a custom font and then link to a downloaded font instead. Now we will of course do both methods in this video here, but I will start by showing you how to use a CDN and then I'll show you how to download a font afterwards. So to begin with, let's actually go ahead and go to a website where we can actually get fonts. So there's a couple of ones you can you know, go to if you want to do that. A very popular one is fonts.google.com, which is a very reliable place of getting fonts since Google usually don't tend to go down at some point in the near future. You can of course also download these fonts if you want to have them locally on your computer and use method number two that we'll talk about afterwards. But this is a good place where you can get fonts from. There's of course also other websites like dafont.com if you want to go in there. They usually tend to have a little bit more of a unique type of font in there uh, that you can download, but we will stick with Google Fonts in this episode here. So what I can do is I can go in here and I can actually select a particular font. Uh, let's go ahead and pick one that has a little bit of a selection. So you can actually see this one has 12 styles. This one has three styles. This one has one style. So basically, uh, if you were to go inside Roboto, which is a font that I personally love using, then there's many different versions of it. So I can scroll down and then you can see down here we have the different styles. So I can say we have the thin one, we have a thin italic one. You can actually see what the um, uh, the font weight of the font is and the style of the font is. So if we were to actually download these, we can actually change the weight inside CSS when it comes to these fonts here. So what I can do is I can select the ones that I wanna use. So I could say I want to use the thin one, maybe not the italic one, so let's skip that one. So we can take all the regular ones that are not italic and just get some that are a little bit thicker. So we can go down and maybe in the last one, let's actually go ahead and get the italic version too, just so we have them in there. Uh, so what I can do after picking the ones that I wanna actually get, uh, either you can just click download and it's gonna download everything, or you can go up to where it says view selected families, click it, and then you can see all the fonts that you selected in here, and then you can download all at the bottom there. Or we can just go directly inside our HTML and link to all these fonts here. So that's what we're gonna do to start with here. So what I'll do is I'll scroll down and find the section where it says to embed a font, copy the code into your head of your HTML. So what I can do is I can copy these links that we have here and go inside my HTML. And then at the top of the page, right above my CSS files, that is a very important thing by the way, because in order to use the font inside your CSS, it has to get loaded in first. So it has to be right before the CSS files. So I'm gonna paste them in here. And you'll notice that we get quite a bit of a link here, it's quite long. Uh, we will actually get two links and I'll actually go ahead and explain what these two are. The first one is a pre-connect link that is essentially there to try and load in these fonts a little bit faster than simply just loading in the font. So the first link here is not actually the font. It is just a way for us to try and load them in faster and you can have it or you can not have it. It's really up to you. So what we can do is we can actually see a little bit of information about this font. We can see what the name is. We can see what kind of style we have for it. We can also see the different weights. So we have 100, 300, 400, and so on, uh, which basically means that I can actually now, after saving, of course, go directly inside my CSS and actually link to one of these fonts. If you're in doubt about what name you need to link to when you go inside your font family, you can also go back inside Google, scroll down a little bit, and then it says down here that the CSS is going to be this particular one down here. So what I can do is I can copy this, 
go back inside and simply link to what it told me to link to here. So this is the fallback font. If this one fails, then this is the closest default font then it's going to jump to, uh, but it should not fail unless there's no internet connection. So what I can do is I can simply save this one. And then you'll notice as soon as I refresh the website, it's going to change slightly. It is going to be very similar to the font that we're using right now, but it is going to change slightly. So just kind of pay attention to when I click that it's going to change a little bit. So this is the Roboto font that we can use. We do of course also have some more fancier fonts. So if we were to go back here, uh, let's go back to Google fonts. We do have one here called Rubik bubbles, which looks a little bit more interesting. So if we were to go down and let's say I want to select it, go back inside my selected families here. Uh, we do have Roboto still linked here uh, and that's quite all right. We can do that if we want to do that. Uh, so what I can do is I can of course scroll down to where we have the link. We don't need to pre-connect another time. So let's just skip that one. And we can actually go ahead and link to these two font families in here directly. So what I can do is I can copy the link, go inside my HTML and replace this link that we have here. It's going to just go all the way, replace it. So again, we can go back inside the website just to see what do we need to actually link to. In this case, it gives us both Roboto and the new one here called Rubik Bubbles and the closest matching one from inside your default fonts. So what I can do is I can go back inside the CSS, replace it. And then you can see inside my website, we get something a little bit more interesting than the other one. So now this is how we can actually include a CDN linked font inside the website, but we can also download a font and just link to it inside our style sheet. It is a little bit more work. Like I said, in the end, it's probably not worth the trouble unless you do plan to work on this website quite a bit offline. So what I wanna do here is I want to go inside my Google fonts and I'm just gonna go ahead and deselect all the different Roboto ones. We're just gonna take the, uh, the new one here that we just got called Rubik Bubbles. And what I can do is I can go ahead and download it. So I'm gonna download, and then you can see it pops up down here. I'm gonna go inside my root folder, right click, create a new folder, and I'm gonna call this one fonts. And inside my fonts folder, I'm gonna go ahead and paste in the zip file that we just downloaded. And then I can actually go ahead and extract it. So I'm just gonna extract it here. And with the file extracted, we now have a font called rubikbubbles-regular.ttf. If you're in doubt about which file that gets extracted and which one you have to use, then typically it's the one called TTF. Now, I just want to point out here that in some cases, if you were to go to another website than Google Fonts and download a font from, let's say, the font.com or something, in some cases, when you download a custom font and you try to use it inside your website, those fonts may not be optimized for websites. So if you do everything the exact same way as I do in this video and it's still not popping up inside your website, there's a couple of things you can do, but in most cases, it's because it's not really supported when it comes to using inside a website. So what I wanna do here is I wanna take this custom font and I can just actually go ahead and delete the other two files here. And I can go ahead and go inside my CSS file. And at the very top of the CSS file, I'm gonna go ahead and actually create a piece of styling called at font face. So I'm gonna say hashtag font dash face, curly brackets. And inside the curly brackets, we're gonna add two pieces of information that are mandatory. The first one is going to be the font family, which is going to be where we can give it any kind of name that we want to. So if I wanna call this one bubble, I can just go ahead and name it that. Then I can go down to the next line and I can give it a source, which is going to be the link to the actual file. In this case, we're gonna choose URL. And inside the URL, I can just simply link to my fonts folder. Actually, we have to go back one directory because right now I'm inside a CSS folder. So I have to go out of the directory and then inside the fonts folder. So I'm gonna say punctuation, punctuation, forward slash, which is go back one directory go inside my fonts folder and then link to Rubik Bubbles Regular. And in this sort of way, I can actually go ahead and just reference to Bubble, go down to where we have our font down here. So in this case, here it's Rubik Bubbles right here. I can just go ahead and replace it. And doing this is going to allow for me to, again, load in the font into my website. So if we were to refresh it, you can see everything is the same because we're still loading in the same font. And in this sort of way, you can download a custom font and import it directly into your website. Now, I will go ahead and be using Roboto in this course here. So I actually already went in and replaced my CDN with the Roboto version 
uh, without downloading the font, but just linking to it online. So if you want to follow my course here exactly with the same font, then just simply go in and get the Roboto font by simply linking to it using a uh, Google Fonts CDN link here. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.